So the unit that we're going to be taking a look at today is the A16T2. This is 16 uh, SATA ports, 16 SATA connections, however you want to look at that. And this is from Accusys. Now if you want to go nuts and have a whole bunch of machines connected together through PCI Express, Accusys actually makes a lot of products to do that. If you need a PCI Express switch, yes, it's just like an Ethernet switch, except it's PCI Express, Thunderbolt, instead of Ethernet, uh, they actually provide that. This device is sort of a middle-of-the-road option that is aimed squarely at video post-production, high bandwidth, massive amounts of storage. And I've got to say, this, this device actually pulls it off. I was really skeptical at first, but once I got a close look at it, uh, this thing has four 20 gigabit ports. Um, it is compatible with Linux. Uh, it works best with Macs, I guess, because Macs have built-in Thunderbolt. We've been testing it with the Asus Thunderbolt 2 interface, so that is an option. Um, Linux clients are also an option. So you could actually have a hybrid mode where you've got a Linux box that's a front end with a Thunderbolt interface to this thing, and then the Linux box could provide connectivity for, say, 1 gigabit or 10 gigabit Ethernet clients. But for your actual video editing workstations, if you've got, you know, two, three, four video editors, they can direct attach to this thing through Thunderbolt and get, you know, basically the full speed there. At 20 gigabits per second, we're talking 2 gigabytes per second file transfer speed. That is insane. You also don't have the protocol overhead. So with SMB 3.0 that we were discussing before, um, you know, with the whole multi-channel thing, doesn't really enter into it. This is for PCI Express lanes and PCI Express is already designed to be multi-channel and so all of those problems basically go away. So for a relatively low cost, low headache solution for a video production workflow, this device is basically the holy grail because you don't have to have 10 gigabit ethernet, you don't have to have 10 gigabit ethernet switch infrastructure unless you have other machines that you also want to do editing on, but it provides a faster interface even than 10 gigabit ethernet, 20 gigabit in fact. So let's take a quick look at the hardware. At the front, we've got 16 three and a half inch bays. It's got sort of this click lock, quick release mechanism. The way that this thing ships is each drive is individually packed. The drives are not shipped installed in the unit owing to um, smart packaging. Generally, when you get a SAN, you really do not want a SAN shipped with the drives pre-installed. You just, that's not a good idea, trust me. The drives in this are individually packed, which is really, really awesome. There's at least an inch and a half of foam around the drives pretty much on all sides. I think it's an inch top to bottom, but it's <laughs> the drives are really well packed. Our particular unit came with Western Digital Enterprise grade drives, four terabytes, 16 of them. This also has two 400 watt power supplies for redundant connection. At the back, we've got our four Thunderbolt ports, and then we have a mini SAS expansion connector so you could daisy chain another set of drive bays from this thing if you really wanted to. Now this is a rack mount solution and it does come with rack mount rails. Uh, it pretty much requires a four post installation just owing to the weight of the thing. Although you can use it in a desktop configuration if you want. Now because it is Thunderbolt, I'm sort of expecting that in a small office configuration, you're probably gonna have your editor workstations fairly close by to this thing. And so how loud is this thing was sort of first and foremost on my mind. For this being rack mount gear, it is surprisingly quiet. You can definitely hear that it's on, you can definitely hear when it's accessing, but it's not the, you know, 12,000 RPM fan noise that you might expect. Let's take a listen. Overall, they've definitely put a lot of work into keeping this device as quiet as possible. Still, keep in mind it does require Thunderbolt cables that are Intel certified, and so the length on those can be somewhat limited, so your editor workstations will have to be fairly close to the enclosure. Now in terms of RAID modes and RAID configuration, the controller in this does support operating in RAID mode. You get RAID 0, 1, 5, 6, 0, plus 1, or JBOD. You can configure this through the provided GUI. It also has a Java-based GUI that you can use to configure more options. You can also set a global hot spare so that in, in the event that you do have a drive failure, it'll immediately start using a drive that you had designated as the hot spare that was otherwise not used for part of the array. Generally, because it's 16 drives, I would definitely recommend that you do at least RAID 6, 
Although you could do raid 60 or some combination thereof. Maybe the hot spare or two, maybe not, depending on what your preferences are. Now because this is designed for post-processing and because Accusys I think knows that the uh, people that are in the video production world are not necessarily storage specialists, it does actually provide some tools to help you do performance evaluation of the different disk configurations so that you can find a performance configuration that fits your needs. The higher performance it is, generally the less space available that you might have, but this enclosure does also support SSDs, for example, so if you wanted to use SSDs for caching and acceleration, that would be an option. However, I will tell you that I did not have a chance to actually test the SSD functionality. That's just something that they're adding to the enclosure, and so I don't know that SSD support is really super mature yet, but I would love to take a look at that in the future. The RAID control GUI does give you the option to utilize any on-drive caching that you might have. However, you will really, really need to make sure that you have a UPS set up for the SAN if you're going to do that, because it does not have any kind of internal battery back mechanism. Um, array desynchronization problems can occur if the array loses power at an unexpected time, so you'll really, really want to make sure that you use an uninterruptible power supply, not just with the drive array, but also with the machine so that it's physically attached to, otherwise you can get some RAID corruption pretty quickly and pretty easily. That's not really a problem with this hardware, that's just a problem with this type of approach to RAID in general. Another really nice feature of the software here, again designed for video post-production working, is that it is able to do RAID slicing is what it calls it. So it turns out that with a mechanical hard drive that when you keep the data mostly to the outer edges of the disk, the outer edges of the disks will be faster. And so if, for example, I wanted to take our four terabyte drives and partition them into two halves, I could use the slicing mechanism that's in the software and say, I'm only going to use the outer half, the outer two terabytes, and I'm gonna use those for my fastest storage. And the slicing thing in the software will ensure that when it's putting the data on the drives, it will always use the outer half of the disk, the faster half of the disk, whenever it is using that particular slice. So effectively, I could split the storage in the storage cabinet in half so that I have an archive grade half and a speedy half. Now the reality is that with this many drives, it's gonna be plenty fast enough for what we wanna do with it. And so it doesn't really matter for our particular use case. But if you wanted to guarantee the maximum possible performance, you could set up a faster slice and a slower slice. And the slower slice would be the inner half of the hard drive and the uh, faster slice would be the outer half. And it will guarantee that it's using the outer tracks on all of the hard drives for that one particular slice, which will help guarantee sort of maximum performance. That's, that's a really interesting feature. One of the really cool feature of the software is that it does support snapshots. One weird feature is that it only supports eight snapshots. Snapshots are sort of kind of like a backup, but not really. It's just sort of a differential change. So let's say that I'm working on a file and I make a whole bunch of changes. Well, it's a thing called copy on write. If this enclosure creates a snapshot and then I change a file, instead of overwriting the parts of the file that I'm changing, it just allocates new space and writes it to the new places. And so this can lead to block fragmentation on the files. But in doing this, if I say, hey, uh, I've made a huge mistake, I need to go back. It's able to look at the previous snapshot. And when I ask for a particular file, it will give me all the blocks associated with that file at that point in time. But then if I need my more up-to-date copy or the copy that I've you know, overwritten some, but not all of the file, it will give me a different set of blocks for the same file. The, file. the blocks that were in common between the two files will be the same for each one, but the blocks that were different for each file will be returned differently. So effectively what this means is that if I open up a document and I change a paragraph in the document, when that document is saved to disk, rather than overriding the file with my new paragraph. It just sort of saves the file somewhere else and transparently the, the operating system or the software that I'm using doesn't know that that's happened. And so if I go to the storage mechanism and I say, hey, you know, what did this storage array look like as of yesterday or four hours ago or whatever, it's able to give me that. There's not really a performance penalty associated with that because it's not really copying the file, it's just not overriding the file when somebody has a change and it's only not overriding the parts of the file that would have changed. So there's no performance penalty, there's no real overhead for doing that. The only weird thing is that it only supports eight snapshots. I have a feeling they'll fix that in the future, but if you were to do say two snapshots a day, they would only keep four days worth of snapshots and generally I recommend keeping at least two weeks worth of snapshots. So. 30 to 60 snapshots, I would say, is more typical. Eight 
is a little on the thin side so i would definitely set it up for one snapshot a day around noon and uh, hope that if somebody messes something up you notice right away so why do we have this why do we need this it's like well we're going to be doing a lot of video production we need something that's not just for archive but that's for also work files we also sort of plan to grow into it a little bit this piece of hardware is a specialty piece of hardware it's definitely very niche it is not a generic piece of hardware, but the particular problem that it approaches, which is very fast, very quick access to post-production video, it solves it well. It solves it brilliantly, I would say. It is definitely well worth the money. Overall, it's more cost-effective than outfitting a small team with the equivalent 10 gigabit hardware, even if we were to build it. Even if we were to build this on 10 gigabit Ethernet and use Windows Storage Server, you know, 2012 R2, and some of the other stuff that goes with that and then outfit our editing workstations you know thunderbolt actually honestly ends up just being cheaper and easier now strictly speaking this solution is designed for mac but that's because of the extensive and historical mac support for for thunderbolt but using this on linux and windows basically it's fine it's also expandable in that we could put a linux box on this and expose it to 10 gigabit ethernet if we do that in the future so overall that actually works really well but for us for video editing especially video editing 4k footage this thing runs like greased lightning so if you're in the position of doing video production work you really should take a look at these Accusys products they're very interesting and I haven't really seen anything this advanced on the market before so if you have one of these and you want to share your experiences please do let us know head on over to the forums at techsyndicate.com I'm Wendell I'm signing out and I'll see you there and don't be surprised if you see this hardware show up in other later videos as we sort of get better acclimated to it mm -hmm.